Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Ask the Prof. I've got a lot I want to cover in today's video, so I'm going to dive right into it. As always, if you like the content, please hit the thumbs up. That helps other people see it as well. Also, as always, if you have suggestions for other topics that you want me to cover, or you want to agree or disagree or have questions about this video, please leave them in the comments section below. Today, we are going to cover caffeine use and endurance performance. Uh, obviously, caffeine is the most widely used psychiatric or psychoactive drug in the world. Uh, about 80% of adults use caffeine on a daily basis, 90% of Americans do, and they get about 300 milligrams per day. That's quite a lot. So it should be no surprise that caffeine is also one of the most widely used supplements in the endurance world and just general sporting community. And there's good reason for it. One, it's you know something we're using on a day-to-day -day basis. Two, it's very cheap compared to other supplements that we're taking. And three, there's a lot of research out there that shows that there's some benefits from doing it. Some of these benefits include fat mobilization, uh, so basically we're able to uh, get more fat, mobilize, moving around. That helps us burn fat a little bit easier, spare some micro muscle glycogen. This is especially good for endurance athletes. Uh, basically, it'll help us save some of that uh, sugar that we need for later on in the day. It also can help uh, affect a number of nervous system responses, hormone responses, uh, fight or flight, uh, those types of things. It can help us in certain circumstances stay more alert and it can also um, increase uh, our, our core temperature, which can be good in some circumstances. It can also be bad in some other circumstances. Um, but, you know, in terms of like helping us warm up in the morning or, you know, getting ready for a race, maybe that could be a benefit uh, there as well. So all this being said, there are actually a lot of assumptions uh, that are being made with caffeine use and endurance or long course triathlon or uh, ultra running specifically. And this is because most of the studies that we see on caffeine are done either on sprinting performances, medium distance, or up to an hour, maybe some up to two hours. But there's really very few studies that go beyond that two hour mark with caffeine uh, dosing throughout the entire event. Maybe we see a study where we dose caffeine at the end of a long endurance activity or a retrospective study where we're looking back and asking what people did throughout, but there aren't very many studies that are controlling the doses throughout an actual event. Uh, and this is leading, you know, a lot of triathletes to essentially have to guess uh, at what they're doing. And so I'm going to cover this topic a little bit in more detail here moving forward uh, and hopefully give some re recommendations and tell you a little bit about my plan and why I have it set up the way that I do. So let's get started. So the first thing that I want to cover is the dosing. There is a ton of research out there on caffeine use, but as I said, there's very little uh, done on caffeine use and dosing recommendations throughout a endurance event lasting more than two or three hours. Now, the general recommendation is three to six gram, uh, milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Do not confuse grams with milligrams on this one. It will send you to the ER. So the, that's the general recommendation. But most of those studies are doing that using events lasting less than an hour. The average half-life of triathlon can or of caffeine can once it's consumed can range anywhere from two and a half to seven and a half hours that's a huge range and that really creates an issue when it comes to okay how much caffeine should i be consuming every half hour every hour or whatever as we start to develop our race plans for race day the typical triathlon mantra more is better tends to apply to how most people approach caffeine they're taking a ton and thinking that, oh, as they start to get fatigued or as they start to uh, get deeper in the race, they need to taking, be taking in more and more and more. Well, unfortunately, that's really not the case. And in many studies, it suggests that some is okay or can be good, but once you get to a certain level, you see no additional performance improvements beyond that, and you actually might see performance detriments beyond that number. And so that really creates a lot of issues with setting up your specific plan uh, for your race. 
So to put this, some numbers in this and to put this into context, most studies out there are using doses of 200 to 400 milligrams for the event, right? But these events are less than an hour long. So does that mean that we need to be taking in 200 milligrams per hour? Personally, I say absolutely not to that, but there's really not that guidance in there uh, for recommended hourly dosage. And there's good reason for that. One is because of the costs associated with actually doing a study that would help us see that. Being, having a controlled multi-hour study with multi-athletes uh, would be quite time consuming and quite costly and, and very difficult. Another and probably more important reason that we don't have that dosage or set dosage or set dosage recommendations is because there's such a wide range in the rate at which we metabolize caffeine. There are slow, medium, and fast metabolizers, right? And this is actually something that is linked to genetics. So you are born being able to metabolize caffeine either slow, medium, or fast. You can actually, this is one of those things that the genetic testing like 23andMe can actually do for you. This is absolutely not an endorsement for that company, um, but it is something that if you are gonna be using caffeine and really trying to dial in your race plan, spending the whatever hundred dollars to get that test done might actually help you dial this in and really fine tune your own personal plan. Not necessary, something I found value in and did myself personally. Again, uh, there's a ton of other uh, companies out there that can help you with this. Uh, so, you know, pick whatever one uh, suits your fancy if, that, if that's the route that you want to go. A 2005 study done actually at the Ironman World Championships uh, surveyed a, num or a number of triathletes that were at the event and they found that basically most triathletes don't know how many milligrams of caffeine per body, uh, kilogram body weight they're taking per hour. They don't know the anticipated benefits that they're supposed to get. They're basically known that they've seen it in advertising. They've heard it from their friends and they've seen, you know, other pros are taking this much. So that's the amount that they should be taking. Uh, and so that's how they actually base their race plan on or lack of plan and just kind of wing it. In my opinion, most triathletes are taking too much caffeine throughout the race. This is the same for both amateurs and pros alike. All right, so a little bit of caffeine can certainly be beneficial. Too much can actually be very detrimental. All right, we'll see you know, things like upset stomach, irritability, loss of mental focus. There's some research that suggests thermoregulation or the, you know, your sweat rate goes up, your heart rate goes up, things like that. That's a little bit more uh, individualized, but there are studies that have you know, kind of been on both sides of that, so there can be some negative effects there as well. Right, so a little bit can be good, but too much can easily make it uh, so it's harder to focus, harder to really dig deep and dial in and go to that dark place uh, that you have to go, especially at the end of the race. And so it, you know, it's definitely something that you need to consider and really need to uh, mess around with in training in order to you know, really try to dial in what is gonna be best for you as an individual. When we have most gels out there that are offering 100 milligrams per serving and recommending you take a, a gel every 30 to 45 minutes, I mean, 200 milligrams per hour, even if you're just doing that on the three to four hours on the marathon portion of a long course triathlon, that's a significant amount of caffeine. And you know, in my opinion, that's way too much. It's very easy to get your plasma levels of caffeine into the range or even above the recommended range throughout the entire event. Furthermore, studies have recommended or has suggested that there's really not much of a difference between regular caffeine users and those who just use caffeine on race day. And also they've shown that there's really no need to taper off of caffeine leading into event, that that doesn't actually provide, make it more potent, more effective on race day. So thankfully for me, I don't have to skip my cup of coffee every morning leading into a race. So my personal takeaway is the amount of caffeine that you should use should be the minimum. You should err on the not quite enough because the, the ease it is to go over the hump or to go too far and the negative effects that that can have. So the studies that are out there are showing that it doesn't really take that much in order 
to get to the recommended ranges that you need, especially if you're consuming caffeine throughout a you know a full a half Ironman or a a full Ironman distance event. So for me personally, I fall into the moderate or the medium metabolizer of caffeine. Uh, that's what the testing has shown me. Uh, so my personal approach is to have a morning cup of coffee. Uh, sometimes I only have about half, especially if it's going to be warm. I don't need to, you know, be trying to get my heart rate up or elevating my body temperature too early. I want to stay as cool as possible for as late in the day. For a 70.3, I'll have no other caffeine until the bike. On the bike, I might have 25-ish milligrams of caffeine per hour on the bike. That is pretty low compared to what any other, uh, you know, any of my competitors are doing, but that's where uh, my training and what I've messed around with, that's where it, I, it shows that I uh, perform the best. If it's hot, I'll skip the caffeine on the bike altogether and just wait for the run. In an Ironman distance events, I still will have no more uh, caffeine after that morning cup of coffee or half a cup of coffee until after the bike. I do not, do not take any caffeine during the bike segment at all. Then I'll have about 40 to 60 milligrams of caffeine per hour on the run uh, in the in, on the marathon, if it's a half marathon, I'll maybe be in the 100 to 120 range. Uh, for the last hour of the marathon, I'll get into that 120, 120-ish range uh, per for that hour. Again, this is based on what I've done testing myself. Uh, and then there's been a couple of studies that showed that in the last hour or the last half hour of an event, you can actually benefit from having 100 milligrams uh, of, of, a, of having a 100 milligram caffeine dose, but you had no additional benefit if the dose was up to 200 milligrams. Again, that's something that's going to be a common theme. All right. You, you don't necessarily see an increase in performance by increasing the dose. All right, so my approach is always to have as little as possible to get the benefit that I'm looking for. And this is much, much less than most supplement companies are going to suggest that you need, in my opinion, based on what I've done with myself and based on the research. Regardless of what you plan on doing, it is absolutely essential to practice this. You don't wanna just wing it on race day or leave it on race day to figure it out. Practice exactly what you're going to do in terms of caffeine usage as well as everything else nutrition related uh, leading into the event. Look for differences. Start with no caffeine, add small amounts throughout, and see what if you can notice any differences. If you can't notice any differences, then you have to ask yourself, are you really getting a benefit from it? Right? S remember, there are people who will have a negative effect from caffeine use regardless of the amount of caffeine that they have. All right, it's not a huge percentage of us, but there, but enough to make it worth your while to test no caffeine versus a little bit versus a moderate dose. For me personally, I'm never going to get above a what's considered moderate dose or 200 milligrams um, unless I'm doing, you know, you know, if I'm doing one of the Zwift races or a a, um, a 20 minute TT effort. Maybe I'll have 100 milligrams uh, early, you know early couple hours before 100 um, before I start the workout and then maybe another 50 right you know 10 minutes before the actual test or the actual event that's really the only reason I would go above that low amount uh, just because there it's just not worth it in my opinion Again, that's what I have for you today. Thanks for tuning in and making it all the way to the end. Hit the thumbs up on your way out and we'll see you next time.